Today on Parker's Reefs, we review Greg's stunning Red Sea Peninsula tank. Truly a brochure quality tank in his own home. Welcome to Parker's Reefs. I'm here uh, today in Gray's Point with um, Greg, who's been kind enough to have me in his house for the night and also show me his incredible um, Red Sea Reefer XX. Uh, 650. 650. Yeah. Um, I wanted to do a quick video to show you this tank because uh, whilst it's only six months old, it has to be the cleanest installation of a tank um, that I've probably ever seen. In fact, I joked online last night that it was um, it was worthy of Red Sea promotional material. In that, when you see their tanks, you see them in um, these model homes without a cord inside. There's not a, not a bit of tubing or hosing or um, a, a tub of fish food or anything. It's, it's, it's an ultra clean install to the point where you've even installed this wall plate um, with white cable conduit to, to hide the cables so they go in there. Um, you mentioned before the cable was a dirty word. You, you, yeah. you, you cannot see a cable in this tank. There's obviously not heaters dangling in there and things like that. It, it is truly embodies what I believe to be the uh, living piece of furniture. Um, can you, can you tell us through what led you to this point? What brought what, you into the hobby? I think, I think you, you summed it up. We, we always wanted a marine tank and um, you try to get a nice marine tank in a nice place and they end up just looking like a yeah. box of cords and whatever. And my wife, who is our designer, found this in a brochure yes. and it was clean like this. Yes. And she said, I'll have one of them. Yes. And I went, that doesn't exist. And, <laughs> and I don't know if you remember the, the um, brochure, but the they don't even have a cord coming from the light. Yeah. And I remember going to the shop and I'm going, how do they do that? It's amazing. They go, it's just a promotional thing. I go, that's not fair. You know, how not fair, exactly, yeah. So the plan was to have the tank not with cords and things and it was the only way I was ever going to have it, yes. to be allowed to have it. So that was the start of the plan to, to be able to have something like this in the house that looked like it was nice to look at rather than bits and pieces hanging on. Yeah. And then obviously you look at how much it might cost to do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not a small investment, but I mean, to, to take it from that uh, glass box of experiments to a um, living piece of furniture, it's, well, it's not so much the, the cost involved, but it's the attention to detail. And like I said, little things like the color-coded conduit there. Yeah. Um, obviously, the, the Red Sea hoods are... are it's made life it's, a lot easier. It's a work of art. Yeah. Um, the AI hydras sit in there beautifully. Yeah. But... MP40s means there's no cords coming in. MP4, yeah, no cords in the tank. And yeah. being the peninsula style tank, you've been able to put the dry sides back here. Yeah. And we've even got yet yeah, another, it's, it's an ultra tidy install. Yeah. Um, so congratulations on being able to basically replicate or if not one up a Red Sea promotional uh, brochure. I'm sure they'll be um, probably knocking on the door ready to do a photo <laughs> shoot for their next uh, brochure. Can you tell us about, um, I know you mentioned before that initially when you started this tank, you were looking at going um, fish only. Yep. Um, and, and now, um, I must point out this tank's only, it's only, you've only had this tank for six months. Six months, yeah. Um, which is unbelievable. You, yeah, you wouldn't want to have seen my tank six months in. It um, did not look anything at all like this, so that, that's incredible. How, at what point in time did you go from having, wanting to have a tank with, with fish only and then um, Fast forward six months, we're here, and you've got an incredible array of coral thriving in the tank. So you, you set it up with the rocks and the scape, and you put a couple of fish, and it looks great. And then you go to a shop, and I just remember the day, Slippery Little Suckers yes. in Kensington, and they've got this display tank with LPS, with everything bright as anything. And the whole family's there, and they've just gone, we want a tank like that now. <laughs> <laughs> you got to stop taking this family. Really. And you just go, oh, I don't know if I could do that or not. You know, yeah, yeah. And it's so young and so new, and so I just um, thought, let's see what we can do. And I bought GSP. Yes. And it seemed to be okay. And then Hardy, next thing you know, yep, you yep. buy a, a Zoa and, and they stay alive. And, yes. And next thing you know, every week I'm coming home with a box of new corals, keeping an eye on the numbers. Yes. And saying, well, the numbers are just telling me it's okay. And I just kept putting more and more in. And then you end up with this. And um, it, I honestly, I never would have thought I could have kept coral alive. I never, yeah, yeah. never would have thought I could keep, you know, have this sort of thing in my house at all. It's just been a a step by step progress that surprised me every step of the way. And it's, it's not a day I don't get home and look at this and go, oh, it's you know, that's the best nice thing about reefing. Did I do it? Yeah, yeah. It <laughs> you is, know, it is yeah. such a um, it is such a challenge, but a rewarding challenge when yeah. you get it right. 
I think one thing from my perspective that's enabled you to do that so well is the, the you haven't cut corners. You've, you've done things right first time. You've 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 obviously got an incredible tank. You've got the right quality flow. You've even gone all out on an incredible quality lid. The yeah. lighting is is absolutely on point. Even your life support system. I know you run um, automatic water changes. Yeah. Um, I believe, and I've put you on the spot now, but I believe you're running a, a or you're about to run a, a 12 volt um, backup system. No, it'll be, <laughs> it'll be there'll be a 12 volt backup system. I'll have to attach a battery to. It yes. won't be automated. That's okay. That's yeah. okay. But I mean, you're you're preparing for that. Yeah. I mean, you're well, not. We've had three blackouts in six yeah, months. Yeah, right. And one yeah. of them was a bad blackout. Yeah, so yeah. I had to do something. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. But you need all that stuff for longevity in this. Yeah. You know, like, um, Otherwise, you're just fighting yourself. We were talking last night about how it's at the start when you're motivated and yeah. still keen and fresh in the hobby that it's, yeah. it's easy to spend you know all weekend working on it and yeah. tweaking this little bit here and there. But it only takes um, you know a, a family emergency or a, a, a week away with work or, yeah. or something or just illnesses on chewing on a cough volley now. Yeah, um, it just takes your time away from the tank and then it just it can start to decline off. So if you put those methods in place to keep things going. Obviously, we, we like to be able to tinker with the tank, but um, if you can get the basics happening by itself, yeah. it, it's going to keep You want to do the fun things with your tank, you just don't yeah. always want to do the hard work, you know? Exactly. I remember that we first got that flipper glass cleaner and it was yes. a fight who got to clean the glass. Yeah, you know? right, right. We couldn't wait until we got a dirty glass and now I'm, you know, I'm the only one that does it. So <laughs> that's six months, so you've, got to, you've got to think sooner or later that you're going to have to, um, have things running on your own for the most part. Fair enough. Fair enough. No, that works well. It's clearly why I'm interested in a KH Guardian, I think, or something along those lines yeah. as well. Just to yeah. Make that side of things. Make that side of things. Cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that works well. Yeah. Tell us a bit about your livestock. Um, obviously, we've only just switched the lights on. The lights don't normally come on for another two and a half hours. Um, so, uh, we've given the coral a little bit of time to work up. I took a bunch of pictures last night, so I'll put some still pictures up of, of just how the tank looked when it's in full flight. Yeah. Tell us about um, your coral, or, or maybe firstly fish. You've got a couple of unique fish for a mixed reef. Yeah, so I actually started with fish that I caught from um, the river down the back here, and um, I got rid of them as they became annoying. Yeah. So <laughs> I ended up with still a puffer fish. Yes, yeah, the little guy up here. This guy here. Yeah, the little puffy dog. Yeah, yeah. He's been actually pretty good fish and I've got this big scat or butterbrim mm. in the middle here that um, I actually wanted to get rid of and I couldn't catch there for a while. And, then and I'm glad you couldn't because it's a stunning it's, fish. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah. The silver shimmer off, off him is uh, stunning. Yeah. Um, and then I've got a school of glass cardinals which I actually didn't know what they were until you told me. And yeah, one of my favourites. And they're a great schooling fish and you know, the most neutral fish you'd ever have. They don't yeah. do anything except school. <laughs> yeah, I, I find that it, people talk about schooling fish in reef tanks, and uh, to me, maybe sometimes they hang out near each other, but glass cardinals are rarely ever further than a, than a palm yeah. apart. And it's just such a, you know, neutral fish. They don't hassle anything. Yeah, no they one's don't pick at them. anything. They just do their own thing. In actual fact, I wouldn't buy some more. Just yeah, because the other thing is, even with more, they still stay in that tight bunch, yeah. so it looks even better. The only thing I can point out, um, or not point out, mention, I added some more uh, glass cardinals to my tank with a trigger, and I got ones that were a little bit small and uh, right. the trigger, uh, much to the disappointment of my daughter, uh, ate them all that afternoon. Ate them all <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 one after the other. So um, they were tiny when I got them, like tiny, tiny, yeah, tiny. Yeah. And now they're actually, you know, they're a reasonable size fish. They are, yeah, they're, they're doing well. And then there's a little guppy there. He's actually yeah, like, I love the guppy. So he was from down the back. He actually had a, a mate that uh, went missing maybe a month ago or something, which I wouldn't mind replacing, but. I didn't, again, didn't know what it was. It was so small you couldn't sort of make out what it was when sure. you got it. And then it grew those fins and whatever, and you look it up and you go, oh God, I've got myself a guppy in full salt water, and he's, he's quite happy. So you, you, you caught the guppy already in brackish or in salt water? Well, down the back, you probably call brackish. But okay. At the time, we hadn't had rain for months, so You're it was right quite nice and windy. So, because you can, if you're like, if you bought a guppy from a pet store, you can slowly adapt it, but it takes a lot of effort. You, nature's done that for you. So yeah. you're able to drop him in, and he's, I mean, he's an active member of the tank, he's yeah. very busy. Yeah, he's a pretty little fish. And then um, you get your classic, you know, blue tang, yellow tang, those sort of fish, clown at the front. Um, yep, yep. My daughter's always wanted a sailfin. I love sailfin, so that's a beautiful her, fish. That's her own fish, yeah. chip. 
and then um, I took a risk on a harlequin tusk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and look, he's been a model citizen so far, and it's a stunning fish. And I really had, um, I had no idea, I would have thought that would have been the world's worst fish for any sort of reef tank, and um, people sort of said you can do it, and I thought, God, it's Give it a go. my all-time favourite fish, Yeah, I'll have to try that. And then obviously, the um, trigger. Yes. I thought I'd give him a go, he was just too cute at the shop, and quick Google search, yep. suggested yep. maybe he's not the best tank member, but We'll see how uh, he goes. He'll be right till he gets a bit bigger at least. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah I, I love triggers. I'm a big fan of triggers. It's a completely different swim style and pattern. Yeah. And, yeah. He's and quite a pretty colour. Uh, quite a personality too. Quite a personality yeah. as well. I mean, uh, saltwater fish are just so much more personable than any sort of yeah. freshwater. Yeah, really become members of the family. Yeah. What about your coral side of things? Tell us about. So, mostly LPS. Mm -hmm. um, again, that shop was all LPS and yes. that's sort of what I, what I wanted. And I just love hammers and torches. And yeah, you've got an incredible Euphilia collection here. I'll get some footage of uh, my favorite coral in the tank here. The hammer over there that's got- Triple. Triple, um, on the one hammer, it's got three different heads with completely different yeah. colors on it, which is amazing. I've seen two colors before, but I haven't seen three on a single piece. So I just love the flow and the way they move. Yeah, you know, I sort of always have. And um, yes. yep. I guess I probably have it terribly progressed from there too much. I've got some gonopora and some lobos and synphilias and acans and so forth. And I was just trying to keep it simple. Yes. I, I don't I, I don't want an overly complex tank that's um, gonna be a lot of work, but then um, the last couple of weeks I've actually bought some SPS. <laughs> it's natural progression. You're just you're just ahead <laughs> of the curve. Normally the pressure got to you're me. You're only six months in normally people are just still still getting around the fact that they only want fish and then they go, I'll oh, just add one coral at six mark, mark and then it's 12, 18 months they start doubling with SPS, so. In actual fact, I had the um, Cifastria yes. come in on a, on a coral that I didn't buy and the guy said to me, that's SPS, you know, it's an easy one, but just so you know, it might not survive and it's sure. actually thrived. Yes. So in my head I've got, well, maybe I can do more. So I bought a couple of pieces, I've got given a couple of pieces and yes. um, we'll see how we go with them, whether I, progress with that too much or um, take a step back on myself. So sure. far so good, they're looking great. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for showing us the tank. I, I really appreciate it. Um, obviously, thank you for your hospitality as well. I've been able to crash you for the night. And um, it's been an absolute pleasure to see a, yeah, a tank that we often think, you see those brochures that, that they don't exist. It's a Photoshop tank. And um, yeah, I think that if anything, they'll be photoshopping pictures of your tank into their next brochure. So, um, <laughs> well, credit yeah. to you on, on such a install. Yeah, technically. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, thank you very much. Right. Cheers. Thank you.